didn't think I was gonna have a chance to see you here. Or yeah, I've got you. to. Uh, I've got to run to the airport to pick up an investor. But uh, well, ten minutes. I, sure. Yeah, I really appreciate you. You know, being here and doing what Could you're doing. Sorry, I didn't hear your name. Oh, I'm Josh. Josh. Yeah, so I was telling Audra, I'm a physician. I'm actually at a conference in San Diego. I have reached out to your wonderful sales team, and um, Audra was able to kind of give us a, Audra's amazing. a quick tour, and I got to get some insight from Cam as far as the solar panel arrays and developments and awesome. some of the testing that you guys are doing now. And I know you guys had a, a great hour-long video updating everyone yep. just a few days ago with kind of the progress with your um, you know, investments and the capital infusions you guys have been getting. But if there's any you know, updates even since then or anything that you know, is, is you, you most exciting. You were two big investment groups were here, so <laughs> very <laughs> nice. Was, uh, good very timing. Nice. We're yeah. talking with a lot of people and traveling all around the world. and. Um, you know, it, unfortunately, it seems like the North American capital markets are pretty frozen, but uh, other people around the world are doing very interesting things. So sure. um, hopefully Aptera is in a lot of their plans. I, I feel like that this is unlike any other vehicle design and philosophy and certainly something that I think is resonating with people more and more. And it's almost paradoxical, but as these capital markets and, and money gets tighter, you realize that efficiency is just as important as anything else and, and even more so. So I feel like this is the time where you really want to, you know, focus on, on efficiency and, and being, um, you know, as, as inexpensive as you can per mile. And this is it. Yeah. When uh, supply chains are askew and resources are short, you want transportation that uses as little energy as possible, not only to make the device that you're being traveling around in, but also the energy that it's going to use per mile cool thing about the Aptera is no dictator can shut off the sun mm -hmm. so you know we have uh, wireless nuclear charging for every Aptera <laughs> and uh, keeps it on the road for more than the average person drives so exactly. you know it's a, it's a perfect solution in times of, uh, <laughs> of economic distress for sure for sure when the zombies attack that, this oh, this is, is exactly this is the vehicle to have. At the end yeah. of the world, this is the only vehicle that people the are going to be. gas pumps aren't working. Yep. I mean, yep. they're making uh, I Am Legend 2, so we should probably be in that movie <laughs> for Will Smith. I would think so. Around. Yeah, we, um, I mean, I have a, selling Audra, I have a plug-in hybrid, a Honda Clarity that I got in 18, and I've loved it so far. I have some videos on it as well. And that 47 mile, you know, 50 mile an hour, give or take range is more than enough to get me through the day. Huh. You know, I very rarely need to use my gas engine so 40 miles of solar is even better I mean yeah. you don't have to worry about plugging it in at all and the vehicle that I have on order will have I think 600 miles of range so I mean that that'll be I live in South Florida I could probably make it almost halfway to San Diego I mean it's pretty pretty cool maybe not quite but it's a lot of miles, <laughs> it's a lot of miles but uh, certainly more than I think most more people than would, anyone would wants need. to drive in a single go absolutely you definitely absolutely. want to stop and yeah. the cool thing is you know we charge five times faster than you yes. know, the, Average EV. Average EVs are getting bigger and bigger with you know SUVs and luxury yeah. sedans and stuff. I know. So you're going to pull into a supercharging station. And you're going to be charging four or five times faster than all the cars around you. So yeah. you know your 20 minute um, you know restroom and snack break yeah. has you know several hundred miles of charge into your Aptera, and the guy sitting next to you is you know still reading a book or playing games on his uh, infotainment display, waiting for his X vehicle to charge. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, you know the. I guess somewhat recent implementation of DC fast charging was something that the community was concerned about before the announcement was oh, made. Oh yeah, they let us know. They let us know, exactly. <laughs> um, were, were, there, were there reasons why it wasn't announced initially that um, made you We need more your... logic in your power distribution unit. So sure. the distribution unit that actually lets DC into your battery pack, okay. there needs to be a couple extra contactors in there. You need to have the logic sorted out for how that works. I see. Uh, the engineering team, we were talking about, what is a launch vehicle? What features do we want on it? They were like, uh, DC fast charge, whole nother development task. Okay. Get rid of that if you want to get this vehicle on the road quicker. Mm -hmm. We said, check. Didn't really think about it. <laughs> but, you know, everything below DC fast charging was already designed in, including the spots to put the contactors and the bus bars. You know, mm. we had designed all that. But then when we started talking about what is the launch edition vehicle, and we started going through all the specs, because that's what the engineering task the engineers have to execute on uh, they said well if you want dc fast charging it's another task do you want to add another task we said ah, no don't worry about it mm. then we announced to the public all the specs and they said you better add that task mm. <laughs> uh, so we did uh it didn't it wasn't overly complex it was already semi designed in mm -hmm. we just had to kind of take the extra steps you know the control logic that sort of stuff it's another validation step too i so understand you have to validate that it actually works the way you want it to work so is it going to be a huge hit on the time frame in terms of the release for the launch edition? Big no, that? it's okay. just more money. 
Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And with the thermals of the battery, is it are they liquid cooled or? The batteries are liquid cooled. They're cooled per module. So, okay. I see. Uh, base, you know, there's a base plate on the bottom of the batteries, and that's okay. what cools batteries. You can also heat them up too. So in the winter, you heat them up, and oh. when they get hot, you cool them down. There you go. That makes sense. And this is a question. I don't know if you have any insight into this, but um, I have an infinite home. Is there any discussion about um, child safety or car seat uh, adapters? I, uh, well, we designed the Aptera not just to be a safe vehicle. We wanted to design the safest vehicle we could put on the road. Sure. You know, this carbon fiber safety cell that we have wrapped around the, the passenger compartment. You know, when we did the last FMVSS test, we actually had the highest roof car strength of any passenger car on the road. Wow. You know, we have great side impact, you know, protection, a huge crumple zone in the front. Mm -hmm. um, so we feel the Aptera is a very safe vehicle with safety belts and airbags, everything you'd expect from a traditional vehicle, but through the power of composites much stronger in many, sure. many ways. Sure. Um, we, uh, we haven't really taken into consideration children because okay. we haven't decided to put a uh, uh, child seat in the back. Okay. Uh, but there is um, the ability in two seat vehicles to put a child in the passenger seat. Um, so, you know, it could be a consideration in the future where we turn off the airbag and let you put your child, you know, in the passenger seat. We also have talked about a third seat option, but it's kind of way down the line. Way down the we line. do have room. We Definitely, yeah, I was just in there, as you know, I mean, there's plenty of we room. We could put, you know, so. a, a, an extra seat in the back. Exactly. You know, I wouldn't say that it would be, you know, maybe a teenager's seat even, but definitely right. a young child's seat. Definitely. Um, yeah, I think it would be, you know, certainly helpful for- That's something that people have uh, have asked for, and certainly yeah. I think there's gonna be a lot of variants of the Aptera, yeah. uh, variants that are more commercial friendly. Nice. I think that over time, we'll probably sell more Apteras for commercial use than we do consumer use. Mm -hmm. um, individuals don't care as much about the variable cost of the transportation gas prices go up electricity prices go up sure. but fleets they know how much money they spend on fuel every year mm -hmm. and if they had you know a six million dollar fuel budget and you showed them a way that you could eliminate that fuel budget they're mm -hmm. very very interested so you know for package delivery or delivering food or checking fence lines or checking meters you would want to do it in the most efficient definitely you know least cost per mile thing you could and that's the Aptera. So. Yeah, definitely. And what is the cargo capacity of the the, the latest model, the Gamma? Thirty-two cubic feet. Nice. Thirty-two point five. Thirty-two point five. Precise. Oh, there you, there go. you go. It's yeah. an extra one because we added that bunk storage in the bottom. Right? Okay. Yeah, no, that, that's <laughs> great. I mean, that's certainly more than you know, like your typical trunk for sure, and almost in line with some of the the crossovers that I've been I've been seeing. So. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting storage because it's really long. Too. Exactly. So you can put a couple of mountain bikes in there. If you yeah. fold the seats forward too, you can get nine foot surfboard in there. You can, you know, obviously you just lay it in the back so you can camp in the back. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. So, yeah. our camping kit is a tent and a step, so you can get in, get in and out easier. And mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's awesome. I have that ordered as well. Uh, the so. this design compared to the Delta production design is a little different too. The hatch has grown all the way to the rear of the vehicle, mm -hmm. um, and this distance has shrunk, and yes. the tail grew four inches so the rear is longer it's actually deeper it's an inch and a half deeper okay um so you know because the hatch closed over the rear it's easier to get in and out you don't have to worry about scratching anything yeah. um you know so i think uh you know the production version will be even better than what you see here and these solar elements will be on the glass itself yeah we extended the hatch so sure. that we could throw these cells on the hatch these are really hard to conceive of how to get power from them yeah uh, so we basically extended the body side all the way to the back okay and then brought the hatch all the way there. And it'll have the kind of like foam molding on the side, is that right? And yeah, it'll have the, yeah. the corner lights and mm -hmm. kind of the replaceable corners. That's so. great. Yeah, because it's, there's only, what, like six pieces or so? Like for the, There's for only the body? six body pieces. Six body but pieces, they're, yeah. But they're really, really strong. So yeah. you know, a lot of people say, you know, what happens in a minor accident? Well, you know, a shopping cart or a five mile an hour accident mm -hmm. isn't gonna do anything to this because it's really strong carbon fiber composites. Uh, whereas a steel or aluminum vehicle, you'd dent or mm. scratch it or, like that. What about with the the vinyl wrapping? If there's little nicks or, or, or scratches, uh, the cool thing about the vinyl wrapping is it's uh, is it self heals, or you can take a heat gun and oh, heal wow. most of the little stuff. So okay. you know if your kids are scratching it or it gets hit by a soccer ball or something, uh, that's pretty easy to uh, to work out. Hmm. If you had a bigger accident where it you know tore that or really scraped it, 
um, then you know you only have to replace the vinyl on this piece. Mm-hmm. You can imagine that's twenty bucks worth of material. You got to pay somebody to do it, or you do it yourself. Hmm. But it's really easy to kind of fix that. If you had to go to a paint shop, you have to prep the whole surface, and sure. primer, and three stage paint, and clear coat. You know, very inf- environmentally friendly. Bad because yeah. you're atomizing solvents. Sure. Whereas the wrap, you know, you peel the old one off. Sometimes you have to add a little heat to get it to peel off easy. But peel the old one off, slap the new one on, and you're good to go. Amazing. I wonder why more vehicle manufacturers don't implement vinyl as opposed to the, the, the paint process because it just seems a lot more expensive. And yeah, a lot there, more there are a lot of premium vehicles now that you can order from yeah. the factory vinyl wraps. So if you want a soft touch color or you want, yeah. you know, some metallic changing color thing, you just mm-hmm. order it in vinyl. So uh, Tesla ships their vehicles now with wraps from the factory. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the vehicles driving around with it. So um, Supercars and more expensive cars have done it for a long time. Yeah. But, uh, we're doing it because it's more environmentally friendly, and we've designed the vehicle such that there's mm. not much to wrap. Okay. It's really just the side pieces. Mm. All the top is solar and other pieces. So, you know, the pieces of vinyl are manageable. None are really over 30 inches wide. Gotcha. Uh, so, you know, when you have to wrap a whole, like, big SUV, you have to have a bunch of cuts, you know, in it to get the vinyl to go over the whole vehicle. You know, there's no real cuts needed in this. It just slaps on. Mm. Good to go. Takes the place of the paint. It means we don't have to spend all the money for a paint shop. Good luck getting the paint shop approved in California. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so uh, no paint, vinyl film. And after a couple of years, if you get bored with the color, you know, it's 1200 bucks. you know, get a new wrap, hmm. put Gucci print on it, you know, <laughs> make it rainbow color. Exactly. My daughter loves rainbow unicorns. So Ooh, I could so have there you go. You can do whatever you want. Dancing rainbow unicorn. Do, do you have any uh, understanding as to where uh, consumers might be looking at, at the federal tax credits when, when they purchase a vehicle like this? Uh, we don't, um, we aren't included in the IRA tax credits. We hope that there's a provision in the future to allow three wheelers to be part of that tax credit. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of state incentives for just clean vehicles that include okay. motorcycles, uh, but the IRA is not one of them. So, um, you know, the state of California and others have really aggressive electric vehicle mandates. Sure. We think that as those mandates become closer, they're going to realize we don't have the grid infrastructure to handle this many electric vehicles. Gosh, if we had solar electric vehicles, that takes care of the whole problem. So we hope that we can uh, entice a lot of states with uh, with vicious EV standards you know, to get them into to the market quickly. Mm. Uh, that this is what you need because you can get more electric vehicles on the road uh, with less impact to the environment from their construction, and they don't tax the grid. So you're not having to plug all these vehicles in. Um, so you get you know kind of triple bang for your buck. So I think uh, hopefully we can get a lot more state incentives along the way, and eventually the federal government will hopefully take notice too. Yeah. And this is a question I asked Cam as well, but figured I'd ask you. Um, in terms of the IP that you guys have developed from the ground up, are you interested in, in kind of marketing that or, or selling that to other uh, automakers or other industries? That we are, We're know? talking with several um, potential customers for our solar technologies, uh, putting them on many different types of vehicles, yeah, yeah. Um, as well as our battery pack technologies awesome. um, you know we have a very energy dense pack and just to be able to build those modules in volume is something that a lot of people just can't get unless you're a big you know have a lot of a lot of funding so there's a lot of mid-tier and small tier players that would love to just buy batteries from us same thing with our user interface you know very trick user interface you know sourcing the the hardware for that and you know the software to run that is is quite a quite a heavy lift mm-hmm. so we think we can monetize uh, that as well so there's lots of intellectual property that we would love to see spread across the EV industry. Uh, we love efficient vehicles in general. So the yeah. more we can help people get more efficient vehicles on the road, the more we're doing for the planet. Amazing. I guess last question, what are you most excited about within the next few months with Aptera and what do you see as like your biggest hurdle right now? Uh, what I'm most excited about and the biggest hurdle is funding. So I think we've had a lot of positive conversations with great funding partners around the world. Um, and I think, you know, some of those will come together in the next couple months. So the uh, most frustrating part is not having the funding to push, push, push like we want. Mm-hmm. But the most exciting part is that we're making great progress on those fronts. And, you know, when one of those breaks, uh, you know, we'll be having shots of tequila and celebrating, you know, getting this vehicle into production quickly. Awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of people are celebrating all over the world because it's, uh, it's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for the visit, and I hope you enjoyed the tour, and hopefully you'll have an Aptera in your driveway soon so you can go 600 miles in one direction <laughs> without a potty break. Um, yes, then, exactly. Uh, That'll can, be the real challenge if I can thing. actually <laughs> last as long as the car. That's that's the real thing. Yeah, I'm good for about 180, <laughs> 200 miles, and I break yeah. down. So, so good luck doing 600. You'd have to buy some astronaut diapers probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. But uh, listen, I really appreciate your time. This is such a privilege. Chris, thanks, thank Josh. you so much. Appreciate it. And uh, enjoy your trip. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Woohoo!